What is up, guys? For the very first time, we are coming at you with the face cams maxed out. We are here. We are here for the very first podcast episode. Super excited to have you guys along for the journey. We're just going to be hanging out, talking. You guys can get to know us a little bit better. Usually, we're playing games or doing commentary. Uh, but for this video, it's going to be a little bit different. You know, we're just going to kind of hang out and talk. We are both in our respective apartments uh across the united states so well i guess you're back home ryan i, mean, I am back home at the moment so you know, not in my apartment you know maybe for the next episode i'd, I'd be back but who knows yeah so uh but we are still apart so but dude that is the wonders of, of modern day technology dude we are able to talk have a conversation dude you know just kind of just ham it up dude ham it up over the over the mics and yeah, so this is the Three Piece Media Podcast. If you guys have never seen our content before on YouTube, it's at Three Piece Media. Uh, that's our YouTube channel. But yeah, we upload a lot of games, you know, uh, us playing different video games. We'll live stream. Uh, we do like TV, movie sh uh, reviews, stuff like that. That's kind of like our brand of content. But yeah, this, for this podcast, it's kind of just going to be open us, you know, chatting about those topics, but also anything that's like happening in the world that we want to talk about. Very open-ended, I would say. And then... Uh, what I'm super excited about is for every podcast, we will be answering questions and discussing topics from viewers. So if you guys have any specific questions for us or topics you'd like us to discuss, you guys can uh, comment on this podcast, on other videos on our channel, or if you were to join our channel Discord, you can ask questions there. Absolutely. It's really cool what we've been able to build with you guys so far. Like just, you know, all the little interactions and you guys tuning into the vids and commenting and keeping up with the content. Like it's so cool that we can form these relationships with people like all over the place because of the internet nowadays. It's super, super cool. We're creating a little community. And if this is your first time, welcome on in. Uh, you're going to be joining us for, you know, we'll be talking some video games, talking about life, talking about some random stuff. But dude, Ryan, know what I thought about the other day, dude? What do you think about? Dude, isn't it? Okay. So I, here's like more of like an idea for you. Okay. So just chew, yeah. just chew on it for a second. All right. I'll chomp on it. So... Isn't it crazy how like m like ninety percent of the time you feel like you're either like too busy, like you have like 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 tasks on tasks on tasks like stacked up, and you can't even really focus on one thing. It's just like you're you're overwhelmingly busy, or you're not. You literally have nothing to do, and you're yeah, just I, like doom yeah. scrolling through Instagram, and it's like, gosh, I wish I had like something to like you know, work on or improve or like even like do or commit myself to, you know what I, dude, I thought about that. After you said the first part of that, I thought that's where you were going to go with it. And I'm like, I 100% agree with that. Like sometimes I'll, you know, yeah, it's either you're just so busy and it's like you just one thing after another and it seems like there's like no end in sight to it or you have nothing to do and I'll just feel so bored and be, like that, that feeling of boredom makes me almost like paralyzed in a way of like i don't like i don't know what i want to do and i end up like really not doing much and then like you said you're maybe just like scrolling through instagram or something and it's like oh shoot it's three wrong. hours went by and i did i accomplished like nothing instead of right. like you know if you put all that time toward like one specific thing you could like learn a whole new skill you know yeah. what i mean right it's like dude there's so many things that you could do like yeah you could learn a new skill or actually um enjoy one of your hobbies like if you like playing video games go do that you could go work out just take a walk i mean uh read a book maybe there's something for the next week that you could start to work on but yeah some so many times you just end up on like a social media app and you're just looking at it for way too long and the time goes by and you're like oh my gosh like what have i just been doing right dude i'm just aiming for that equilibrium point you know like i'm either like overwhelmingly busy or not busy enough and then like one percent of the time i'm like oh like this is actually quite nice where like i, I feel like perfectly like the perfect amount of busy you know? i feel like it's partially as we get older and i've noticed this as i've continued to get older but like when i was younger each day each day feels so long dude. i feel like i accomplished so much i mean obviously you're not like having priorities as a kid but you just feel like you did so much in a day like think about going to school when like you're in, a, in ele elementary or just on the weekend like what you would do as a kid i just feel like it's just a jam-packed day with you're doing this and then doing this but it obviously it's just like fun and you're not stressed about any of it but now the day is just 
they just burn so quickly. And I'm like, wow, it's already like 10 p.m. Like, oh, my gosh, you know? Right, um, dude. Dude, and, and I, I actually like distinctly remember sitting on the stairs as like a five-year-old kid and like bored out of my mind, like the day is lasting forever and I'm just sitting at home and I'm like watching the hands on the clock move. <laughs> and it's like, whoa, like time takes a really long time to like yes. move from one minute to the next. Yes. And I have all of these separate thoughts that fill out the day. And like you, it's like all, every day is like a literally a new adventure. Yes. You know what I mean? Like you, you experience like a full range of emotions through like a morning and then you have lunch and then afternoons, like a whole other section of the day. And now, dude, we're old and it, it feels like it feels more like Minecraft, dude. Or like in a game of Minecraft, you can only accomplish so much before like the day's over. Like you can get like two tasks yeah. done maybe. Yeah. And that's how I feel, dude. Like like it feels like I on a good day as an adult, I accomplish like maybe one thing, you know? <laughs> it's so brutal. Yeah, it's like there's just so many things to do like on your to-do list, like in your mind, and it's like, oh God, I only like got this done today. And it's just like, uh well, <laughs> on to the next day and try to see if I can do more than one thing, but it's just, uh, it, it's, it's tough, man. And it's the same thing like with time that I've noticed, not just within a day, but I feel like years go by so quickly as well. Dude, look at Caitlin is joining me. Let's dude. go, dude. Cats, get, cats in the podcast, bro. Dude, you can, you can see her a little bit now. Mine's, she's, mine's napping on the keyboard, bro. She's trying to, I think she's trying to sit on my lap. That's but, dude. That's adorable. Um, That's awesome, dude. But, um, yeah, dude, what I was saying is, like, doesn't it feel like a year? Dude, I feel like when I was younger, like, think about just when you're in second grade or something. The second grade school year in the entire, that entire year feels like it is forever. Right. But think about the, the, the time difference of a year now. Does, doesn't it just fly by? Well, dude, there's, okay, so there's, a like, a mathematical reason for all of this, dude, that I want right. to run past you, bro. Okay. So... So get a load of this, all right? And this, like, the first time I heard this, this, like, blew my mind. But okay. so if you're two, and you might have heard this from me before, but if you're two years old, you know, a year oh. as a oh, two-year-old yeah. is half of your life. Yeah. So, like, proportionally, you know, that's, think about, like, that's half of your life. That's crazy. Like, a year is half of your life. Mm -hmm. But as an 80-year-old, a year is 180th of your life. So fractionally, the older that you get, the less time comparatively goes by. Does that make sense? So it's yes. like your experience of memories and perceptions, they just happen like more rapidly. Yeah. So there's less I, like standout memories of like, oh, like, you know, because think about it, like, you know, a day is like proportionally way bigger as a kid than it is to us now. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's definitely something to that. I think that's got to play a big, big role in it. Dude, time, time is a crazy thing, dude. It's like we're all on this, like, stream just floating somewhere, and we're all headed the same direction. Uh, dude, I, I think about it sometimes. It's like, dang, dude. Like, I kind of wish it didn't exist. You know, like, if, if I didn't have, like, a certain amount of hours in a day to get things done, and, like, I wasn't always constantly rushing to the next thing and, like, pacing my day with it, and I could uh -huh. just kind of, like, be and exist, it'd be nice, yeah, dude. There is something to be said for that. Like, putting this 24 hour time constraint on yourself which really if you're sleeping cut that down by probably i don't know anywhere from six to ten hours right you know? and you're getting so, ready for the day there's another like right. hour and a and half then, you're making the meals fact, there's another the hour eating, it's it, right it, like by the time you factor out all these other things for like time for you to actually do things it's it's very limited it's less than 24 hours or less than 12 hours i would say right and and then you might have again like school or work or some other obligation to where like that's taking up a large portion so it's like how much time does that remain for you to do something that you or something that had to be done um and because of the 24 hour time structure i think it puts unnecessary like weight and pressure on uh, trying to accomplish those things or even just have time for yourself it's exhausting dude it's exhausting and it never ends dude and like we have weekends but even weekends i fill with stuff because otherwise i feel like i'm wasting my yeah. weekend you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> exactly and dude that's a i i try to get out of that mindset like i'm sure I, i've heard this before and i'm sure you have where like you don't want to be a, a person that's like just excited about the weekend like the weekend's great and but 
it's like if you, eventually if you just get keep only getting excited about the weekend what does that mean for the rest of the week it, like you're just maybe dreading the rest of the week and you don't want to be dreading the whole week because that's five days that's almost the whole week you know dude yeah exactly um, like i don't want to just be looking forward to the weekend i want Monday through Friday to be great days as well. Dude, that's and that's something I try to keep in mind too. And I think about like you know I'm gonna be like a full fledged adult, dude. Like graduating college and like got to figure my life out pretty quick here. And it's like, what do I want to fill those forty hour work weeks with? You know what I mean? Like if I if I hate myself, if I'm making a lot of money but I hate myself, it's like, is it even worth it? Because that's like forty hours compounded again and again and again across my entire life and it sort of, right. sort of becomes who you are to a certain extent you know and and that's where i think people will say that money doesn't buy happiness and like, like money can do a lot of things to where i think it more just like can alleviate a lot of concerns or stresses in your life it can totally do that and, and it is important but i don't it does not directly correlate to like happiness in my opinion and i would much rather not be dreading those 40 hour week work weeks or the Monday through Friday with making less money that rather than having that higher salary, but you're really dreading that, you know, and you end up just like, are just completely looking forward to the weekends. And that's like kind of all that you have to look forward to. Like that's, that's kind of sad to me. Right, dude. Right. And dude, okay. I'm going to tell a little, I'm going to tell like a quick, a quick little story, dude, about, okay. about, you know, my work life, dude. You've heard this before, dude, but the viewers have not. I'm gonna spin a I'm gonna spin a little yarn real quick. All right. So so I work, I'm an engineering student. All right. So I'm an engineering student, but I've always enjoyed like being around kids, you know, coaching kids, uh, you know, just like maintaining that like young at heart attitude, Ryan. You know what I mean? Like you you know this about me. Oh, yeah. And uh, and so I work at an elementary school and I try to help like kids who have like, you know, who are maybe a little bit more aggressive and like get into fights or have behavioral issues or just like haven't really adapted to the classroom environment yet. Um, and there's this little kid, this little first grader who I've been working with. And and I so so he was like he's just very he's very smart, like almost too smart for his own good. You know, like just just very clever, very always like working the system in his favor. He gets like rewards throughout the day. And so he's allowed like a reward every like three tasks that he completes. So if he like does a math sheet he and like two other things, he gets a reward. So and he, but he kind of abuses that system and he starts like getting more and more rewards and he like goes for longer and longer. And it's like, wait a minute, you're just kind of like having fun all day. You know what I mean? And so there was one day where he was pushing me like a little bit too far and I got angry at him and I got like pretty mad and he got and he started like punching and kicking me and all this stuff and I felt really bad but I flipped out at him like I absolutely flipped out dude I blew my top off and I it takes a lot for me to get mad dude but I get mad like the way my dad does where it just like it festers like deep inside of me and like I there's not even like a clear indication that I'm getting mad besides like me like kind of like showing it with my eyes but if they're not paying attention it's like not super obvious you know and then i just like blow up you know and i blew up at this kid and i in my head i was like okay like he's not responding to anything else and in this school they use like a very soft parent soft gentle parenting tactic to get these kids to listen like they're like all right i'm counting to 10 like you better you better listen now i'm counting to 10 all right one two and they're like continuing to jump on desks and like punch other kids and it's like you know what i mean so i'm like all right i'm gonna go in there knock some heads together with my with my male influence and it completely backfired because this kid's used to getting yelled at at home and he doesn't have like a dad in the picture you know so so his mom's just constantly screaming at him and i yelled at him dude and he just goes, you have bad breath. And I'm just like, God, dude. And it just made me so angry at that moment. And very recent. And so I was like, I did, and I went home just distraught, dude. Like, like this kid like broke me down, right? Like he's playing psychological warfare at that point. And like me yelling had like no impact on him in my eyes. Um, So I go home, dude. I'm all messed up from it. And I'm just like thinking about it. I call my mom and she's like, you know, you just got to shower this kid with love. Like if you apologize to him, like if you go up and apologize to him, how many people in his life do you think are doing that? 
You know what I mean? How many adults do you think he's heard apologize to him? Probably zero. You know what I mean? Probably like he's never had that happen. So next day I go into work and I go straight up to him. Usually I kind of avoid working with him unless they assign me to him. But that's probably what all the adults do. But I went straight up to him and I put my hand on his back and I got down on his level. And that's something with kids that I realized that you kind of have to do is like kind of like when you're talking to them like one on one, you don't like talk down to them. You kind of like mm -hmm. squat down and look at them like you're equals because they're so much shorter than you, you know, and this kid's in first grade. Yeah. So I, I squatted down, I looked at him right in the eyes and I was like, hey man, like, I'm really, really sorry that I yelled, like it wasn't right. And I, I think we can like, we should be friends going forward. And I want to like, you know, work together instead of working against each other. And like a pretty brief thing to say, but I could see like his mood start to change a little bit, you know? And then the next day I go into work, like I didn't work with him that day, but the next day I went into work and I was working with him and he just runs straight up to me and like gives me a big hug and, and we start playing games together and he listens and he's in a very tough first grade class. You know what I mean? Like he's a very hyperactive kid. There's a lot of discipline that's like, they're trying to teach these kids with like organizing your desk, staying on top of your things. They have like stations that rotate when they're like doing math and language skills constantly. And I can tell he's like pretty run down by it and doesn't want to be in the classroom. And I just go up to him and like pat him on the back and give him like a nice back scratch. And I'd be like, hey man, I'm really proud of how you're doing. And he powered through the whole afternoon when I was with him and it was awesome to see. So, and it's like moments like that, <laughs> I backtrack, moments like that is what makes like, you know, like that's like feelings like that, dude, of making like a real difference in someone's life. And you can do this in the workplace too. I really believe that, like doing this with adults. Because like adults are the same way that kids are. Kids are just like more honest with how they feel about things. And they'll just like show you more viscerally. Mm -hmm. um, but like even like investing in the people that you work around like that. And like seeing improvement with your coworkers, I'm sure has the same feeling. But it's just like that feeling will always feel better than earning $100,000 a year or $150,000 a year. Or whatever the goal is, you know, it's um, it's very worthwhile. So sorry for the long-winded story, everybody, but uh, but that was my no, that's it, my that's my two cents, dude. No, it, it's good, and I think it shows there is um, there it's teaching is very rewarding, and or even just working with uh, kids in general. Like I've I have experience not teaching in a classroom setting with kids, but coaching uh, kids in a lot of different sports, um, and. Uh, you know, I've done, I had done that for a while, and it was super fulfilling. And you really can you can quite literally see the difference you're making in in their lives, seeing them improve at a certain skill, or or seeing them respond better to others, treat people uh, better, uh, listen to directions. Like there's there's just so many great aspects that you can directly see the impact, and it's it's awesome. Yeah, dude. And there's like, dude, there's something like strange about like teaching someone something that they're struggling with and then seeing them overcome it like dude yeah. i don't know about you but like it opens like a like another dimension in like my heart valve or something like that where it's like it's like a strange experience where like i'm looking into like a mirror almost like if i see someone struggling like it like means so much to me because i see myself in that kid and when I see them overcome it, it makes me realize something about like human nature, but also something about myself that's like very profound. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's well, such I, a good feeling. I think there is an element to where we've all been on the other side of that. Like we've all been uh, that kid and maybe not with like the classroom behavior, for instance. But my point is we've all been on the other side where somebody older than us is uh, teaching us, whether that's in sports, the classroom. And there's so many different examples and settings that that takes place, but we've always been there. Uh, for, you know, whether it's our parents, whoever, and it, it's interesting to be on the other side of that, where you you can see what's happening, you know, and you can reflect on how you were on the other side of it. And yeah, it it does um, trigger something inside of you that it that I don't think many things can make you you know feel yeah it doesn't really compare to anything else you know it's like its own it's like its own thing but it it it's like that's like the most real thing in my eyes it's like that's the most like like real feeling it's not like meeting some quota or meeting some deadline or like pushing a project it's like 
you know, seeing the growth in the people around you and like the relationships that are built, you know, dude, this is, this podcast is taking like, dude, a very heartfelt turn, bro. And I like, I like where it's going, dude. I I just want to say that. Dude, That's what's great about this podcast. Like we had no intention of this getting, you know, deep and reflecting on all these feelings and emotions, but like, that's what we're hoping to bring to the table with this podcast, where it can go in a lot of different directions and cover a vast amount of subjects. Um, But kind of just let, the conversation guide itself where um, you know it could end up anywhere and yeah I think we'll that's see we'll cool. see where it ends up and like yeah thanks for thanks for joining the ride but uh dude and like the thing the beautiful thing dude is like i don't feel like i'm like faking any of this you know what i mean like dude like this is actually who we are and like i call you you know periodically throughout my day like every day whether it's to like discuss channel stuff but even before that or besides that just to like chat and like update each other on our day and like get advice about things. And, Uh and I feel like this can be like a really cool outlet for that where it's like, it's just more of us hanging out and talking and, and the viewers will get a chance to like, get us to know, get to know us better on like a more individual level, you know? Yeah. One dude, 100%. Um, yeah, I was, I was going to maybe lead that into one of the questions from the viewers. I know we're going to save those for the end, but that kind of connected really well. So should I should I pop that question out? Yeah, dude, pop the question, bro. We All got right. some questions from the viewers, by the way. Um, and if you want to ask a question directed toward us, directed toward anything that you want us to talk about in the world, anything about our, you know, our channel, anything under the sun, um, email it to us uh, at uh, 3PsMediaChannel at gmail.com. You can reach us there. Right. Um, it'll but probably be comment, linked. Yeah, or comment. comment. Yeah, or comment, comment on this video. Comment on any of our videos. We like we reply to all comments, so we'll see it. And then we also have a channel Discord. You guys can join there. That's where we give a lot of announcements and stuff. And pretty stuff. active too. Pretty active yeah. Discord. Yeah, pretty active. We hope to like play some games with there or in there with you guys as well. But there's a, a place where you can ask questions there as well. So a lot of different places you can ask questions or propose topics for us to talk about. But any of those are good. But so what you were saying, uh, let me try to get back to this was. Um, let me try to figure out who asked this. Um, I think it was, I think it was fortunate. I think okay. I'm okay. struggling to find it, but basically like, why did we start this channel and how did it come to be? And that I'll put that to the side for a second, but it kind of, for this podcast specifically is kind of what you were talking about with how, like, you, you know, we, if we were to call each other throughout the day and just talk about, uh, things that are happening in our lives or the right. channel or whatever that's we thought that this could be like a great place to bring that because like we we have these types of conversations with each other like that story that hayden shared about his teaching experience he shared with me and so this is just a great outlet to you know also allow you guys to hear that stuff because i think it's uh interesting and i think we have uh you know, interesting takes on it. I'm not, I'm not saying we're like saying profound stuff or whatever, but I just think it, it, it's cool to have you guys for along the ride to kind of see this side of us and have us talk about it and get our takes on whatever, you know, totally. It adds, like, it adds like another dimension of the channel, you know, it's right. like and what we've been big on with the channel since day one is being connected with our viewers. And so we love when you guys comment. That's why we always make sure that we're replying to comments. That's why we uh, recently decided to start the discord for the channel so we can have more communication and hopefully totally. do fun activities like some playing games together. Um, it's why we started live streaming as well on the channel. So, and then this podcast, I think will also give a different side where it's more long form content. It's not us also focused on a specific game that we're playing or whatever. And just allows for it's a very different dynamic and I think um, it's cool to have that. But so like, why specifically did we start the channel? It's a very interesting, I'm not, do you, I don't know if you remember Hayden, but basically the way that it came to be the way I remember it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's hear your take. Was, and then I'll, was, I'll tell you what I remember. During winter break, I think during like winter break for school for us, uh, the Sp- Spider-Man movie came out. Yep. Um, and, you know, we watched it. We all, me, me, Hayden, and another one of our friends watched it, and we just, we just wanted to talk about it with each other so much. Well, like, dude, and this goes further back too, because we had, uh, so okay, so we had major discord in amongst our ranks, amongst our friend groups, because of our disagreements about the Spider-Man movies and which one was the best. 
So when mm-hmm. this new one came out, which combined all of these separate universes that we love so dear, we knew yep. that we had to talk about it. And it felt, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it felt so pivotal to talk about. Like, so, yes. like we, we yeah. need this recorded. We need this documented. And yeah. I feel like that's where the channel came from. And, and so, because also, like, our friend um, that who we had this conversation with is a big fan of the Andrew Garfield movies. And it's not like we're not, but like we, me and Hayden, are objectively enjoy. worse. <laughs> we, 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 we personally enjoy the Tobey Maguire movies better. We, you know, but I understand there's plenty of people that are on either side of that spectrum. But and so it's always been like a joke between us three, and we'd constantly be talking about it. So like it, this seemed like the most pivotal thing where we're just like we have to talk about this, and we knew it was going to be a heated discussion back and forth. And we're like, yeah, we just had to document it. And that, so that's where it started. And we just recorded it um, and, you know, put it out like our friends could see it and stuff. And then, you know, after that, I think the next video that we uploaded was like an office tier list because we all just loved the office. And we're like, let's see what everyone's take is on the office. And we kind of went with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and those videos are up on the channel. Just know they're not going to be the highest production quality. But <laughs> if you guys want to watch those videos, I think they're still phenomenal. The yeah. Office Heroes, I think, was good. And I think the Spider-Man talking about the movie was great, too. But they're on the channel. Um, but, yeah, so like, that's kind of how it started. And we went with the Office video. And then then we kind of were just like, you know, like Hayden said, we, we would talk with each other throughout the day. But we'd also just be playing games. Like, we love to play video games. And that was just naturally something that happened so eventually i think we kind of just just started pressing the record button like when we were playing video games with each other and it's kind of just like grown ever since then like that's it's it's become something that like we enjoy to do a lot more um totally and that's a, a big reason why is the viewers like being able to connect with you guys and discuss back and forth about like a specific moment that happened in a game or a specific take on a character or I don't know anything like it's it's just super cool to be able to discuss things like that and then so that's there's you can see the progression of once we got to that point we started implementing a lot of different uh forums throughout our channel to increase the connectivity between us and the viewers with live streaming discord podcasts etc totally dude and like I feel like the scariest part early on was like, at least for me, like I love having this like polished, finished product, but with starting something like a YouTube channel with your friends or anything, anything creative, it's going to be a little, it's not going to be how you want it to be right away, but to get good at it, you have to just do it. You know, like that's the scariest part is just to start doing it and then Mm -hmm. seeing where it takes you, you know? So we were just like, okay, zero expectations with this. Like, what if we just start hitting record when we start playing video games, you know? We just, like, record some of these funny moments, try to, like, pick it up on, you know, on camera, start messing around with OBS, some of these video editing stuff, and, like, see where it takes us. And then we start, you know, start reviewing the YouTube algorithm and start, like, planning out. It's like, okay, like, these these types of videos do pretty well, and, like, people are reacting to these. And then we can kind of build that connectivity from there. And now we're to the point where we have a pretty, I mean, we're still like a very small channel and we're doing it, you know, just for fun. But um, we have like a pretty reasonable base, you know, Um, one of our other friends, he does all the artwork for the channel. And like before I was the one doing that in Uh Google, in Google drawings, believe it or not, where I would individually save images that I'd want to use and overlay them. And it would take forever. And I'm not like, I'm not gifted like that, you know? Dude, like, and I, I did a few of those too. And I mean, I was like 10 times worse than you at it. It was just so, so inefficient. It, it's like, tough, just dude. And not- when it's like, all I want to do is like make videos. You know what I mean? Like all I want to do is like be goofy on camera and like make videos. And there's all these other moving parts involved to like get people to watch the videos, you know? Yes. And, but um, going back to something you said, like you kind of just have to, press the record button and i'm it, it, that's something that was very difficult for me too because i'm like kind of a perfectionist and whether i'm you know starting a new job or i'm learning a new skill like i love to have all the information out in front of me so i can do the best that i can right away and while that's good it can also be bad because it can kind of freeze you up mm-hmm. and prevent you from starting something and so many things in life you just have to try and you know you're gonna fail or you're gonna 
not it's you're not going to be the best at it and you'll learn and make corrections and that's what like we have done throughout the process like our our quality was so much worse but like we've improved that through so many things and troubleshooting um our videos like the topics of videos or just the content within them thumbnails i mean so many different ways you can do that and you can kind of apply that to anything in life i think oh yeah oh yeah um Totally, totally, totally. Yeah, so YouTube channel started just because we wanted to see what would happen. And, dude, may, I'm, I'm going to add like a little thing here. I feel like I've been most inspired through like other people's YouTube channels when I'm like in junior high, high school. And mm -hmm. like I feel like you can just reach out and like captivate someone who's like someone who you don't even know. And I think that's such a powerful and beautiful thing that exists that we have like the convenience to you so it's like you know being a youtuber even if it's small it's like that's my dream you know what i mean is like is like to affect people the way that i've been affected um 100 percent shout out to smith plays dude <laughs> dude the smith plays dude great great channel um okay so before we hit some more of the questions that'll probably take a little bit less time to answer let's well do you want to hit a few more of those before we get into the topic that might take a little bit longer yeah, yeah, what we can we can hammer out some more questions, dude. Let's let's uh, all right. dude, fire it, dude. fire it off, bro. All right, dude. from Cray Dilly Tribute, dude. What video games would you like to see Nintendo make, dude? I have one dude. in my mind that I want them to make so bad. It's the next Mario baseball game, hands down. Yeah, dude. Mario Superstar Baseball was like, like pos probably my favorite GameCube game growing up. I really enjoyed Sluggers when I was younger too. I don't enjoy it as much now. It's still a great game. I still enjoy playing it. It's just, I think, I think uh, the GameCube version is just more competitive and like more balanced. I don't like the fact that every single character can like hit home runs in the other game and like every star swing is good. But you know, to each to each their own. I know a lot of people that love Sluggers more, but it's just been so long since we got a baseball game. They, they're coming out with the new golf game, right? And they, uh, what what other games have they made recently? The new tennis, the new Strikers. Yep. Like so they've come out with a lot of new games, and it's like we haven't got a baseball game since we. Come right. on, let's go. Yeah, dude, and that I mean, honestly, I can see that coming around the horizons because those games have been really popular. Dude, a lot of people thought that it was going to be coming on that last Nintendo Direct. Oh, really? Yeah, like I know there was there was a good amount of people that and there was like I think there was even a potential leak that like somebody was saying, "Oh, it may be announced today." But right. no, they didn't they didn't announce anything. So Right. Dude, okay. I'm I'm going to have like a little bit of a different take, dude. And this okay. is going to be this is going to be a hot one straight off the press. Oh no, dude. I got to get ready. Buckle so, up. So, dude, you know, you know the the like the Raymond Rabbids, like the little rabbit guys, like they're like uh -huh. rabbits basically, but they're like they have rabies, I guess. I don't really yeah. know. They're I don't know. I don't understand the lore. I played those games on Wii like as a, as a youth, dude. But they uh -huh. have these crossover games between it's like Mario Kingdom Rabbids or something like that. And it's like a strategy game. So it's like a turn-based strategy game where you have to like take turns attacking and like moving around a board. And I think it's I think it's crap, dude. If you're gonna make if you're gonna make a crossover rabid Mario game, dude, make it good, bro. Make it good, dude. I'm tired of this garbage. It's like, dude, I bought the game, bro. I, I literally I was walking through a Coles and I see it on a shelf. I'm like, oh, perfect. Dude, I, I played Rabbids as a kid, dude. It was zany. It was crazy. It was fun. I love Mario games. This game is going to be amazing. I look at the back cover, dude. Nothing about turn-based strategy, bro. I'm like, oh, this is just going to be like a fun story mode. It's going to be a good time. Dude, it's literally the most boring level-clearing bullcrap I've ever played, dude. So make me that game and make it good this time. Dude, That's my you're take. very passionate about that subject. I'm not sure how many other people... I don't know. I don't know if anybody agrees with me, dude. There's probably like a reasonable amount of fans who like the turn-based game already how it is, yeah. Because they made like a sequel, you know what I mean. So they keep yep. making these games and they are selling pretty well. But dude, I am passionate about it. It's not how they used to make the Rabbids games. I've never seen a Mario game like this. Why are we doing it? Why are we doing it? So that's my take. <laughs> that's that's a good take right there. Thank you, man. Eat it up. Um. Dude, okay, so some more from uh, Cray Daily Tribute. What's your favorite Mario series character? And then also, uh, what would a game centered around that character look like? 
Um, Ooh, I mean, that's a really good question. That's a really that good is, question. That is a good question. Honestly, for no like super particular reason, I think my favorite character may just be Koopa Kid from I, and I've only ever seen him in the like GameCube Mario parties. The, yeah, like, the first few before he was just, discontinued. Exactly. I just always loved that character. No idea why. I just you know. I always gravitated towards him. Uh, cool kid. I have no idea what game. I don't even know the lore behind the Koopa kids and the difference between them and Bowser Jr. So if you guys know, you guys can let me know. So I have no idea what a game centered around them would look like. But bring them back, dude. You can get the blue, the red, and the green one, dude. Get a little trio going. And honestly, though, to, for, I would like a Mario game where you play from as the villain's perspective. I mean, I don't think we have that, do we? Uh, No. Well... I don't think so. No, and I'm no, to we think. don't. Nothing comes off the top of my head. Regardless, that's interesting, maybe, dude. That's maybe interesting. there's one or two, but I would like to see a game like that. Do maybe I play as Bowser or the Koopa Kids or Bowser Junior. Or maybe some you get to play as different characters within Bowser's army. I don't know. I right. think that'd be cool. Yeah, dude, that would be very, very cool. That, that's like, dude, that's me, a that's a good dude. That's a good game idea, bro. You better float that to thank Nintendo. You, dude. I, yeah, I should pass that off to Nintendo, dude. They can make millions off it, but uh. Characters that are still around, I'd probably just say DK. DK's a beast. Love me some DK. That's awesome. But... All right, dude. Well, you go. What you? Got? All right, dude. I'm gonna float you while you were while you were saying that bit, dude. I'm gonna float you an idea. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna float paint. It. I'm gonna paint a world for you. Okay, dude. Paint the picture. All right. So Bowser's. This is this is prehistoric. This is like before Mario like came into the oh, picture. No. So this is okay. pre Mario movie, okay? Okay. So this is just Mushroom Kingdom, Bowser and his Koopas causing carnage, all right? Okay. And they're they've been waging a war for years, okay? okay? So I want I want the Magic Koopas specifically to be the antagonist and there's like a grand Magic Koopa and they use magic to like wage war against the Mushroom Kingdom, okay? Okay. And and then one day, Toadsworth, and it's like young Toadsworth. So it's like a Toadsworth oh, origin story, all right? Okay. So he steals he steals a magic book from Bowser's kingdom, and he starts <laughs> teaching a legion of Toads magic oh. to rise up against the Magic Koopas, dude. Dude, that, that's good. Isn't that, that is good, good stuff? I love me some Toadsworth. Dude, I love Toadsworth, and I need a, I need a Toadsworth origin story. Like, why is he appointed like headmaster of princess peach or whatever it is like i yeah. need i need to know more about why he got in the position that he's in because i know he's a, i know he's an i know he's a knowledgeable guy i know right. that yeah dude I, honestly dude i think there's a lot of room in the mario franchise to just give people more information fill in the gaps create stories between all the characters oh yeah um kind of like how star wars has been doing it with all of there, these shows that have come out it's filling in the gaps of the events between uh attack of the clones and revenge of the sith stuff like that yeah like you're, you're getting to see like oh what happened with darth maul oh here's uh obi-wan like through the years or even like post uh episode three but in like people eat that stuff up for the most part but in so give us some like we know the characters and we kind of know their personalities in mario but we don't know about like any events that kind of happened to him but i mean there's not as much of like a canon story in mario so i don't know but i think right. it could still work but i mean with this new movie coming out and it could be a big hit like i could see some spin-offs maybe potentially happening in the future you know yeah, I'm, I'm and this isn't this is i mean this is more of like a movie idea than a game idea but it would be cool as a game as well you know yeah it, yeah i feel like it'd be a lot more challenging to pull off as a game but that's it's a good it's a good idea but i am excited for the mario movie in heck general. yeah dude heck yeah, but yeah so yeah. what was your fa i know you just had that idea spurred to you i don't know if you played by the rules of cray dilly tribute by saying you had to pick a mario series character and then base a game around them you didn't pick a character so you may have cheated but i, will I picked toadsworth oh okay that's your favorite I picked character toadsworth. Okay, that's fine Okay, dude. I didn't I know. Picked I picked Toadsworth, know. dude. I know you said you loved Toadsworth, but you didn't say he was your favorite before you proposed your idea. You just floated an idea out to him. You're right. I floated the idea first, and then I bat like because I, I wanted to lay out the 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 okay. world before I drop Toadsworth yeah. in there. Is like right. The you have to character. give me the picture first before you, you just throw out that idea. But I will excuse because that is just a phenomenal idea. I mean, how can I? I 
I have to accept that. It's just Thank great. You, dude. And then, like, yeah, Toadsworth is, like, this grandmaster wizard. We get, like, a Sorcerer's Apprentice storyline with, like, Toadsworth <laughs> and, like, the main Toad. Dude, Sorcerer's Apprentice, great movie. Everybody go check out Sorcerer's Apprentice. It's I love great. it. It's a great movie, dude. Great, great Disney uh, flick. Up there dude, with Nick National Cage. Treasure, dude. Nick Cage movies dude, are the bomb. They're they're all so good. They're I don't all get so it. Good, dude. Um, okay, dude. Here we go, dude. We got we still got a lot of stuff left, dude. We got to turn this out. Let's turn um, it out, dude. Let's turn it out. Dude, here we go. Uh, dude, well, let's get rid. You know, Fortune has got some questions here. Have y'all ever seen the ghost of a loved one? That's a whoa. <laughs> it's an intense question. God uh, damn, dude! I didn't know we were good. <laughs> I don't know where you're going to go here, bro. I'm, just, I'm taking a hard, taking a hard left, left turn. turn right off the guardrail uh, and into the river. Holy cow. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to. Respond. I mean, dude, have you? Like, I've never asked you this before, but like, dude, we might get real. I, I'm going to say no. Um, yeah, my answer is no. Next question. I'm just, I'm just, kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I mean, I think my answer is no my answer is no right now but dude i've heard some wicked stories about that yeah i have as well i I have heard stories about people that like truly believe that they encountered a ghost at a specific time and the stories seem super believable so like i'm not gonna dismiss that for me personally nothing pops into my head like that so yeah and i've dude i've tried to hunt ghosts i've tried to hunt (laughs) ghosts before and like in real life i have oh really irl dude IRL in real life, dude. Not on phasmophobia, dude. I dude, I hunted, hunted ghosts in phasmophobia. That's that's my extent of. Dude, like, I hunted ghosts, bro. I talked to the ghost on the ghost box, bro, and nothing. So like, I you. I don't want to. Did you go above the ghost hunting intern? I I mean, no, dude. I was below the ghost hunting intern. Let me. I didn't even have a truck, dude. I was on my oh, bike. Oh no, dude. That's that, that ain't good. That that's ain't good. Tragic, dude. Um. All right, so. Uh, dude, what kind of things did we did we do growing up? I feel like we could talk about this more on like another episode. Honestly, like, yeah. we could probably have like a full conversation about that. But like, dude, we could also uh, save that. We could save that question, dude. Yeah, should yeah, we okay, save I, it yeah. and talk it away, dude? Talk it away for we, next we time. We could talk it away. I was just gonna give like a, like a two second little thing about it. But dude, honestly, give a I'm little. Give, you, okay, you you can, dude. If you want to give them a little, well, dude, I, preview, I'm completely dude. fine with just t- completely tucking it away and saving it and give them something to look for. Let's forward. talk it under the sheets, dude. Let's talk. We're, let's talk it in. Dude, good night. We're gonna say we're good gonna night to that one. one, dude. Say good night to it, dude. Let me just highlight this right here. It's like we know. We're gonna we know, know for next time that like um uh dude, this is. Dude, we, okay, were either of us homeschooled? No. Quick answer. Yeah, no, we went to public uh, school, which was uh, honestly pretty lit. Like, we were in a pretty good public school system, no, yeah, I it, feel it, like. It, it, it was. I'm very, yeah. I'm, I'm very, I'm dude, I'm very fortunate for the school that we, we went to, dude. Pretty and big. no pun intended, because it is fortunate of you who asked the question, but. Very fortunate. Um, Did y'all ever have a bad experience eating at someone else's house? So I, when I saw this question, I was trying to think about a specific time that this happened, and dude, I got one. Do you have like because nothing? I know this has happened to me. I can't tell you a specific story about it happening though. I'd have to. I and I've thought about. I saw this question earlier. I had thought about it. And I cannot come up with an answer. But yes, it has certainly happened to me. But if you have an answer, I'd love. I it. got one, dude. But I'm worried my response is going to get flagged. Oh no! Well, we don't want to do that. So. <laughs> what, <are you> <laughs> what, is that, what does that leave us bro that leaves us at a very pg version of the story or i'll give you, I'll give you, you pg I'll, I'll give you i'll give you are PG. you actually gonna be able to keep it pg yeah you sure i think so you sure you positive i'm pretty positive all right dude you go for it dude, i gotta all dude i'll paint it in a way where i'm the bad guy oh god okay dude hold on <laughs> where are you going bro Bro, Ryan just left, dude. And I can see his whole room now. Dude, what? Okay, he's back. He's back. Yeah, the, I, blackout, I, the blackout's back. The bl- dude, we can I, see I, your I, room for like a second, dude. Oh, dude, really? Yeah, it's dude. Like, yeah, dude. When you left, bro, like it focused on the background. It was very, whoa. it was very, it, I don't know, dude. It, it broke the fourth wall a little bit for me. Was it trippy? It was trippy, dude. I was like, whoa, you're in it. I thought you were, like, th- floating through the void, like a disembodied dude, that, voice. But, no, you are that, in a That's room. the goal here. I know, dude. <laughs> it, that is the goal. Um, dude, I just got to get, like, a backdrop of, like, 
you know how you have those like backdrops on Zoom or something where you can like be at the beach? I just got to get one where I'm like in outer space, just floating around. That'd be so awesome, dude. But all right, dude. Let, let's hear your 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 PG story. Okay. So I'm a young kid. Okay. I don't like this story. I'm in like second grade. Okay. I have a very, let's say, Caucasian palate. All right. I like okay. eating chicken nuggets. I like eating mac and cheese. I like eating mini mini corn dogs, chicken tenders. You know, the one one percent milk, applesauce. Like that's pretty much. I stick in that range. You know what I mean? That's the that's the the food full full food range of a second grader. And yeah. then, and then, dude. Oh God, dude. Let me let me just look this up. <laughs> are you sure you're what is this story what is happening here? so so there's this kid <laughs> there's oh this kid dude who invites me over to his house dude he's from a different part of the world than i am all right okay okay and his sure. name is Venkata marshuran i can't say it what are you i can't say his full name is this a... let me let me spell it is this, a, is this a bit this is not a bit dude this is a real guy who's in my elementary school you, are you name dropping this guy from your elementary? His school? name is Venkata Narimasha Rajivu Paratet. That's his okay. name. Okay. okay, what is Okay, let's let's okay. Yeah, what happened here? So I went over to his house. Okay. And they just served like really it's I don't really have like a good way of like closing out this story. I think I kind of boxed myself into a corner. <laughs> you just like you're just done with the story. But Basically, they served food that I didn't like, <laughs> and I just didn't have. Okay. I didn't eat, and I felt like a little. I felt like a baby, dude. I felt like a. I felt like a baby, dude. I felt like a. Dis- I felt like a baby that was also very disrespectful. Well, I mean, you were a second grader. To, to like That's kind to of back fair. you up a little. But bit. I felt guilty. I mean, well, I, I, I mean, I felt guilty before. I mean, I'm sure everyone can relate to that story of eating at like a friend's house or somebody you know and you don't think the food is very good maybe they overcook something or it's just they what they're serving for dinner is just a food that you been really there don't like everybody's been there and you kind of just been have there to, but i mean and and you know that's happened to me as i've been older and you kind of just you know get the food down as best you can make sure you got a lot of you know maybe a water bottle maybe some milk and yep. as many fluids as possible dude but yeah I, mean, I the- dude i remember eating at this kid's house dude and i would take a bite and i i wouldn't chew it and i'd try to like keep it away from the taste buds that were like affected by yeah. that flavor and uh-huh. just like swig it down with water yeah so the, and yes, they'd I see mean, me eat like that and they're like this freaking dude this white this white kid like doesn't know what's I mean, up. again like a, you know as a second grader my the foods that i ate were very limited just like you it's a very yeah. there's very few foods i was a very picky eater as a kid and i think a lot of people are so you, you know you i don't i would me, like, you give me the you give me the pass on that one you don't think that's a, a little it's a second it's a second grader i mean if I'm we're talking if you're like an adult and this is happening where you're just like actually refusing to eat the food i'm like come on you can try to stomach the food down you can yeah 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 right dude, but yeah. like you know that that happens to the best of us. Oh, um, thank you. But dude, let's let's see here. So, do we have Luigi, Luigi Core proposed a question that is a larger topic that I think we should be saving for the next pod as well. Okay, it's a very good question. Okay, it's I a like really that. good. I like. Should that. I should I give a little sneak peek to the question, or are we just gonna give okay viewers- give a, give the viewers a sneak peek, but just say like one word. Okay, the word is games. <laughs> nice, dude, you nailed it. Okay. That's, the, that's that's the word. No idea, of, you know, anything else. But just stay tuned. It's I'm telling you, games. it's a great question. I think we're gonna have a great conversation about that question. So Luigi could Corp, be board games, could be video games, could be could be game games, could, could be, be yeah. could be a lot of games. But yeah, so Luigi Corp, we did not forget you. That I I just want to have a little bit of a longer conversation with that to where that needs to be on. It's uh, on podcast. Um, but let's see where go. we go here. Uh, yeah, so we went through Cray Dilly uh, talking about our hobbies and how we met. That, that were. And then we fell in love, dude. And that's, yeah, that, that, that's for the next one. Okay. That's like for the we next just, one. 
Uh, but then, so I think we got like one, one or two more here. Um, okay. So we went. Through, uh, okay, so one more. Name a few of your favorite memories playing games growing up. I think this will be. That's basically like the last one. Okay, dude. I'll hit you with a memory that that'll that'll hit you in the core, dude. Okay, dude. Core memory, right? Core here. memory, dude. Core memory, dude. When I met you, I don't know if you remember okay. this. It was like. It was like first grade, dude, or kindergarten even. Okay. And you invited me over to your house, and we played oh, we that. played like Mario Kart and like other Mario games. And I remember like sitting next to you, and we were like sitting on stools, like in front of a TV, just having like a, a blast, a, dude. A bar stool or something. Yeah, 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 dude. It was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome, dude. dude. And then, yeah, dude. From that moment on, we just never went back, dude. And that's like yeah. a that's a real story, dude. Like that's not a yeah. bit. That's like a hundred percent. Like we've been playing GameCube games since first grade together. Yes. Yeah. And so we'll go through like how we met and more of that in the, in the next episode. But that is that's the slight gist of it. Um, I like you've told me that story before. Uh, now that you say it, and it rings a little bit of a bell for me. I, I don't like, like. I remember how your basement looked and felt. Like, wasn't your basement, like, different? Wasn't it, like, not finished at one point? It, no, it was, it was still finished. It's so, like, there still would have been carpet and stuff, but the, it, I'm sure that room itself would have looked very different. Yeah, way. yeah, like, it so, did, it looked like, it was, like, a little bit more, like, barren, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, because there wouldn't have been, like, the Xbox and Wii even in there. Right. So... Yeah. Like I remember I like can like feel how the room felt. Like, I can't e sense. I can't even like feel how that room felt. Like I don't remember cuz I've just like lived with that the, the new version of that room for so long. I don't I couldn't tell you. I couldn't describe the room to you. So I, I feel you have a better perception of it than I do. Which right. is so That is crazy, dude. That is crazy. Core it memory is. though, bro. But yeah, dude, good times playing games. I mean, hanging out with the siblings for sure, dude. Like me personally, just like yeah. I have two brothers and, you know, we'd play video games all the time, switching off controllers and fighting games, playing Super Smash Bros. You know, winners got next. And it's yeah. fun, dude. It keeps you sharp and it's fun to get the adrenaline going when you're playing a video game and it feels good to win, especially against your brothers, you know? It's not fun to lose against no. your brothers. It, yeah, for me the same way. I have an older brother and uh i constantly remember playing like gamecube games with him whether it's double dash or baseball and most of the time he would just beat me and uh it's you know it's such a it's like such a bad feeling but also there's just such fun times to 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 do that and you wish you could go back to it in a way you know dude exactly um, it's like those you know those are the good times right there but um and then i'd say another one would be like when i was first introduced to modern warfare 2 Dude, uh, like in my friend group, uh, and oh my, like I just remember, like my me and my brother, like his friend, like my brother had a friend that's his age, but that had a brother who's my age. It's like we're like, you, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so like we would all like hang out a lot, and then like have a few other people too, and we'd be you can have fair teams. Then, dude, you can you know it adds yeah, a, it adds another layer. Constantly be playing Modern Warfare 2, and it was, like, that's when we first got introduced to it, and it, uh, it was just so fun. There's so many memories of just playing, like, Team Deathmatch on the same TV against each other. They're great times. And, dude, um, video games aren't really like that anymore. Like, before it was more of, like, invite your friends over to hang out, and we'd all play this game around a TV, and it'd be split screen. And yeah. now it's, like, I mean, it's way cooler that it's online, you know what I mean? But there's yeah, less, so like... There's so much more accessibility, but, like, there's not that element of, like, going over to somebody's house to play the game, Dude, you know? There's, there is something totally – There's it's, it's a way different dynamic and feeling that you get playing a game like that in person than you do online. And, like, we even noticed it, you know, like, going back into our high school days, like, when Fortnite was super popular and we would play that a lot. It's like, okay – well, we're not, we're not, we don't want to go over to each other's house because we can't even play Fortnite on the same TV, right? Right. Like I remember sometimes I'd have, I'd have like you or somebody else over where, because I had like two TVs down there and two Xboxes to where we could each be playing on one, but it's like, it's just so much easier. You hop on yours, I hop on mine, we play online. And unfortunately, some of the games are like that. Where, I mean, the, the, again, there's a very distinct feeling of when you're all like huddled around a TV playing smash or something in, in in high school we we played uh 
the new Super Smash Bros. a lot. And, like, those mo- those times were super fun. I feel like, I mean, like, the Fortnite times, for instance, that you can't, it's hard to compare them. Like, they were both awesome, right? But I think there's just something a little bit different about being in person for that. Yeah, dude, exactly. Like, I think nothing will ever, the more advanced technology we'll get, I feel like people are more likely to stay at home and play games online. But I think it'll never create the same kind of tension in a room that you can feel when you're playing against someone in yeah. person. And that's why I think you got to hope Nintendo keeps uh, pumping these games out that are more of like a party style feel up to four players, eight, eight players, Mario Kart, Mario Party. Like these games are perfect for all huddling around the same TV playing together, but also they appeal to such a vast audience. You don't have to be a hardcore gamer into like some deep RPG that you have to put 200 hours into. It's not a super technical game or requires a lot of brain power. Like we have to critically think a ton. It's just, it's pretty easy to hop, hop in, pick up a controller and play. Mm. And it's, you know, super fun and addicting mechanics, easy to learn. Like that's what you want with a game. Totally, totally, Uh, totally. Um, yeah, so that question was by Ethan. And then the last little thing before we get out of here is also by Fortunate saying, what kind of games should uh, we expect you to play in the future? And that's a great question. I like, you, Aiden, you can chime in after this. Like, for us, we're not really, like, trying to upload just one thing. We we like, in an ideal world, we play absolutely whatever we want, just whatever we're feeling. And because we are still trying to, like, grow this community it's a little bit harder to just go from like some retro GameCube game to like a Fortnite or something like that. So we don't, we've been trying to stay kind of in the retro GameCube slash Wii uh, in like mostly Mario titles kind of, but we obviously still want to expand out of that. And I think live streams is where we are going to be expanding out of there more for the most part. But like, you know, most of our live streams are like Phasmophobia or a Fortnite. We want to do a Fall Guys stream, stuff like that. But we're not – and you guys can always comment what game you'd like us to see. If you guys uh, want to see a specific series of a game, we could do that as well, whether that's just, like, us playing through a whole game on a stream or uploading videos for it. One game that we had in mind was Mario Sunshine. You let us know if you want to see that. But, uh, Hayden, any thoughts? I mean, honestly, any game that we have fun on. Like, really. Yeah. Like, that's – I mean, I know that's, like, kind of a cop-out answer, but it's, like, how can we have the most fun – and like we follow whatever feels good so it's like recently we've been playing a lot of mario kart because it's so fun to play against each other and it makes for really awesome gameplay um and it's like it's like i have like a blast recording it you know so we just kind of follow that barometer of like whatever feels good we'll keep doing yeah Um, dude 100 percent. and that's why it's kind of hard to answer it because it's just literally whatever we're having fun with is what we're going to be uploading and you've seen so much mario kart we genuinely have just have so much fun playing that once we got the ability to like play against each other we just couldn't stop like we just love playing that game going like we hadn't played the game in like years or you know, maybe just once in a while here and there you know but and it's just, it was just so fun and we love recording it and so that's why you're seeing a lot of that but we've been enjoying like the, the super smash bros videos we made super fun the mario party like there's a lot of stuff that we enjoy doing but yeah the, the bottom line is Content can always change. You guys can let us know what you would like to see on the channel, but just know everything that we're putting out there is like stuff that we're like, let's make this. Because like when we're thinking about, okay, what videos do we want to record? Like we're thinking about like, what do you want to play? It's not mm-hmm. just like, what should we record for the channel? It's like, what what do you want to play? Right. Totally, totally. Um, yeah, I think that about wraps it up for this first episode. Um, if you guys did enjoy this smash that like button i think these podcasts have like buttons i don't even know it's a new feature we're trying it out trying it um, out. but yeah so we you know we have a few topics and questions remaining that will be for sure on next episode um but if you guys have any questions or topics that you would like to see on the next podcast again you can either email them to us at three p's uh, media channel at gmail.com or leave it in the comments section down below and we respond to all comments you can join our uh, channel discord that link should be in the description ask the questions there under the com- or the questions channel um but yeah anything else Aiden, i mean like yeah say? uh thanks for tuning in guys if you guys made it this far you guys are the true fans all right you guys are the, you guys yeah. are the true th- three piece media fans but uh Yeah, uh, we will see you in the next podcast. So thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll be bringing you more of this wonderful, wonderful content in the future. Peace out.